Episode 27, The Last Train In many places around the world, the train provides a great avenue for people, be it to travel across towns or even across countries. For Robbie, the train was his daily savior to work. He would usually take the train to work in the morning and ride it home in the evening. However, as he had recently switched jobs, Robbie's work timings had changed. And, as a result, his timings of taking the trains were also no longer the same. Robbie would ride the train to work at noon and back home late at night, sometimes just making the last train which comes at around midnight. One day, as Robbie got off work later than usual, he had to rush for the last train. If he missed it, he would have to take a cab home, and at midnight, the price of the cab ride would cost him two weeks' worth of train ride to work. So, as Robbie jogged to the train station, he realized that he had only about five minutes left before the final train leaves the station. Also, he knew that the distance he still needed to cover was about ten minutes if he walked at his usual pace. Realizing also that he would still need to go down the stairs to reach the train's platform even after he had arrived at the station, Robbie's jogging pace got faster. Almost reaching the train station, Robbie was starting to pant heavily and his thighs were burning as though he hadn't ran in a long time. So, Robbie gave a final sprint towards the station entrance, not bothered at how empty the entrance was, tapped his train card, went down the stairs. As he was rushing down, he saw the final train sit still with its doors open, which indicated that it wouldn't be more than a few seconds before it would close and depart from the station. Robbie finally reached the waiting platform, and as the sound indicator beeped repeatedly to signal that the train door was about to close, Robbie jumped into the train right in time before the door finally closed. As the train began to move, Robbie stood beside the seating area as he attempted to catch his breath. Robbie was so relieved that he made the train, and as his legs were still burning as he perspired profusely, but as he calmed down, he began to feel the comfort of the train's AC. Robbie then sat down to finally take a break from his hectic day at work. When he no longer felt the tiredness he felt earlier, Robbie began to look around and noticed that there was almost no one else in the train with him. The only other person he saw was what seemed like a man standing two cabins away from him. Robbie stared at the man closely as he was wondering why the man stood there instead of sitting down in all the empty seats that were available for him. As Robbie was staring at the man, the lights suddenly went off, which slightly startled Robbie. The lights came back on in a matter of seconds, and Robbie realized that the man was now standing closer to him than before. Seconds later, the lights went off and on again. Again, the man was now standing even closer to Robbie, but what Robbie found strange was that Although he was now close enough to see the man's face, he still couldn't do so, as the man still looked like a mere silhouette. Although Robbie was beginning to feel slightly nervous with the eeriness of the man's aura, he kept calm and told himself that he was just tired and overthinking in the empty train. When the lights went off and on again, Robbie's false calmness was drowned out now that he saw the man in the same cabin as him, with both of them only separated by each ends of the same cabin. Now, the man was close enough for Robbie to clearly see that it was strangely only a shadow figure. This didn't make sense to Robbie, as he wondered how could there be a still shadow, as the train was constantly moving with the lights from outside hovering over it? 
Robbie tried to get up and move further away from the figure, but just as Robbie was about to stand up, the lights went off again. Half standing now, the lights went on again, and that was when Robbie saw the shadow figure now right in his face. The figure had a black hood on his head, and what frightened Robbie was that the eyes glaring right at him were fiery red, with the glow of laser beams. There was no nose, and the figure only had a flat pair of nostrils on him. The mouth was wide open, much wider than how much a human mouth could stretch, with sharp teeth that seemed to overlap one another. That was all that Robbie remembered about the figure. Robbie's fears overwhelmed his emotional limits as he fell unconscious and collapsed on the floor. The next thing that Robbie remembered was a tap on the shoulders. The taps eventually woke him up and his vision was blurry. While still lying down and feeling weak, Robbie tried to comprehend what he was seeing. As his vision began to clear, Robbie realized that he was lying on the train's platform. He sat up and wondered what he was doing there, and tried recalling what he saw before he collapsed. He looked up at the sign, which made him realize that he was still at the train station near his workplace. Before Robbie could turn to the person who tapped him earlier, the person suddenly said, Sir, are you okay? Sir, do you need help? Still in a very confused state, but slowly recalling that he was on the last train before he collapsed, Robbie said, I don't know. Where am I? I thought I took the train. Why am I lying here? Who carried me here? There's no train yet, sir. It's 5 a.m. and we are just about to begin our services. When I just arrived from my shift earlier, I looked at the control station's cameras and noticed that you were lying here unconscious. So that's why I came over here. But it's okay, sir. I'll call the ambulance, but for now, let's head to the control station so you can rest there and we'll figure out what had happened. Don't worry, sir. It's going to be okay said the member of the train staff. The train staff member helped Robbie up and they walked over to the control station. Once there, Robbie sat down on a chair and told the train staff member exactly what he had experienced earlier. Finding it hard to believe what Robbie had told him, the train staff replayed the CCTV footage from the night before. The both of them sat right in front of the footage to see what actually happened. From the CCTV footage, it showed that it was 12.04 a.m. and the last train had arrived at the station. However, there was no sign of Robbie, and then about a minute later, the train departed from the station. About ten minutes later, the CCTV footage then showed Robbie running into the train station and tapped his train card to enter the station even though the machine to enter the station was already turned off. Robbie ducked underneath the machine's gantry and was then seen running down the stairs, heading towards the train's waiting platform. The CCTV then showed that right after Robbie arrived at the train platform, he ran towards the train track but suddenly halted and stood still. Robbie then began to close his eyes and rocked back and forth. Although what Robbie and the train staff members saw seemed strange to them, what they saw next completely shocked them. After swaying while standing with his eyes closed, the CCTV showed Robbie began floating about a foot above the ground as his head began tilting downwards 
as though he had been hypnotized. Robbie stayed in the same position for about a few minutes, about the same amount of time that he had remembered himself, experiencing the incident with the figure in the train. The CCTV then showed that Robbie fell down and laid unconscious as though someone had been pulling him up by the back of his collar all this while and finally decided to let him go. Robbie laid there still till the train staff member came to wake him up a few hours later. As the two of them still sat there speechless, and stunned. A more senior colleague of the train staff arrived and entered the control station. He took a quick look at the CCTV footage screen and casually said, It happened again, huh? Robbie and the newer train staff member were stunned to hear how relaxed the senior staff member sounded and Robbie asked, Sorry, sir, does this happen often here? Well, it doesn't happen every day, if that's what you're wondering. But in my twenty years working here, yes, I've seen it happen very often. These spirits here like to play with you if you miss the last train. To avoid this again, remember that the last train leaves at 12.04 a.m. If you can't make it by midnight, play it safe and forget about trying your luck. I would prefer to get a cab and pay for the expensive fare instead of having to go through that. Did all the disturbed passengers have the same experience? Asked the newer staff member. Sort of. They always say that they took the last train and something haunted them in the train as they fell unconscious. They would wake up on the train's platform like our dear passenger here. Anyway, sir, if you're worried about it following you home, don't worry. They love it here, so they never leave, said the senior staff member to Robbie. The midnight fright that Robbie experienced never happened to him again. Robbie ensured that he would always be at the train station, even before midnight. If he had to stay back a little longer at work and couldn't make it for the last train, he'd happily take out $40 from his wallet and enjoy the peaceful cab ride back home. As Robbie always remembered from that point on, it's better to take the expensive cab ride home than to board the last train that never existed. <laughs> 